Hey guys! Well, here we are in Mauvale again after we left last part where we caught ho -Oh. Today we're gonna go find... gonna go do a couple special things. Because last time we learned about a new bird flying around we gotta find. So that does mean today we're gonna be finding roamers. But we don't have Pokedex info on any of the Pokemon that are gonna be roaming. Uh, so we're gonna check that out because I have a way of... Why did I even come this way? I don't need to come... Th Okay, so back down here, I ran completely past it, but over here, in the, uh, the battle, uh, production poster effort, effort values, wait. Well, I didn't want to read about effort values, but if anybody doesn't know about effort values, certain Pokemon give effort values whenever, you, wild Pokemon give effort values whenever you beat them, uh, and a total of four is equivalent to one stat, and you can usually allocate... You can allocate a total of 510, and you can uh, allocate a total of 252 to a single stat. It's the best way to maximize your Pokémon. But while we're in here, we're going to check the PC, and we're going to take Honeybee out, and we're going to put uh, put Rip Van Fish back in the party, because Rip Van Fish is our new water type, as opposed to the not water types we had before. But whatever, he gets the job done. And Rip Van Fish, where are you? gonna spend five fifteen billion minutes going through the oh going through the uh the log again looking for a pokemon that was right under my nose we'll talk to these guys later i plan to do this building as a uh bonus video i want to not brain fart about the name so i'm actually gonna walk out here it's not the battle tent specialty training tower oh wait wait this building is for ev training wait a minute what Tell me the reset, dude. Why is that? Well, I can reset all the Pokemon's EVs right back to zero. Means you can start training in any Pokemon as if it had just been caught out of the wild. Like, I can reset the effort values. Okay, so he will reset the EVs per Pokemon. And you can evidently train it in the tower. And he will sell... Ooh. Ooh, Lime Ball. Uh, he will sell all of the... All of the stat raising items. Each of those raises EVs by 10, but you can only use a total of, uh... Ten of them on a Pokemon. But up here, on the top floor, through this building, there's this guy. So, we're gonna get ourselves ready for a battle here. Oh, no, I don't want to fly off this building I just got to. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. Okay, so we're gonna put Flurry up front, because I think that will be most advantageous for this. I traveled out to Hoenn so I could test myself with the battle frontier. I took a detour here to train before taking the trip on the SS title. This guy had to max out his EVs. How about giving my Pokemon and I a proper warn-up? War warn Look out! Watch out, radioactive man! What is this theme? Pokemon Master Turner, who I think is based on one of the developers. Turner starts out with a level 84 Tyranitar. Don't worry, it's, it's not quite as bad as it looks. But Tyranitar, big Pokemon, Sandstream. We're gonna open up with Moonraiser, because he's a dark type. If we put it to sleep, that sure would be useful. But not making any promises. Stone Surge, okay. I thought that went first. Uh it's about half. Oh, I'm gonna take the sandstorm damage. Alright. So flurry. Let's do Moonraiser again, and see what happens. I do feel like I need Flurry, but we might be okay. We might. The problem is Tyranitar is a real big special wall. So, gonna end up... Ugh, no, didn't quite survive that. Okay. Rough start, but we'll have it. We got it just fine, I promise. We're gonna go with Rip Van Fish now. Now, Rip Van Fish is a ghost type, which Tyranitar can destroy us if he has crunch but I do know what this guy's Pokemon are I'm just gonna surf him and hope that kills I don't know why it would though because why did that do more damage than Moonraiser why didn't he use a dark move like come on man oh uh oh uh oh I think this head sword's gonna finish us off it doesn't. Oh wow. Okay. Um. 
Uh, Siphon's not gonna. Siphon's not gonna give us enough help to survive, so we're just gonna finish Tyranitar off. Ooh, losing two Pokemon for the price of one is kind of rough. It's okay though. These things are worth big XP. Gallade. Okay, Sandstorm is gonna kid. Get that Pokemon is level 95. This reminds me of when we fought Green and Polished Crystal. But, if it has Sturdy, it doesn't, uh, or Resolute, it doesn't start out at full health, so that's fine. Uh, well, I would've used Flurry on that one. But what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use Spooko, who hits really hard enough to do really well. And we're gonna do, uh, open with Will-O-Wisp, just in case. We're gonna take Sandstorm damage, a lot of Sandstorm damage, but it's gonna be annoying. Ice Punch. Oh, I'm a dragon. Yeah, but... But I'm a fire type. Oh yeah, abilities make the sandstorm go away. It, I, I keep saying that, and then I keep forgetting it. <laughs> Let's see how much Devil Darts does. We have Technician Devil Darts, so honestly, should be a lot. Yeah, that's against a Pokemon that's almost 30 levels higher than us. Nobody in Dragapult is just strong. But this Gallade, I, I think, is his ace Pokemon, so not not too bad, all things considered. Plenty, plenty of Devil Dartsing, and we're faster than him, too. What are you doing with your Pokemon, Turner? This guy is... <laughs> nice. This guy prides himself as some kind of, like, super trainer. I think he was called Pokemon Master Turner, and yet... Let's see if we're faster than Garchomp. We are! How are we faster than Garchomp too? <laughs> speed train your Pokemon that are there to sweep. Kill us with the burn. Oh, still, ah, it's a critical hit, of course. Okay, so we lost Spooko, but we got two of his Pokemon and I think the rest should be able to clean this up, no problem. Um. Garchomp should go down with a Taiga. So let's just hit him with that. Um, there's a less lower gap. Yeah! Oh, I got a critical hit too, that's right, because it has massively increased critical hit chance. Because, you know, it's kind of busted like that. Of course, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have gotten hit with rough skin. Whatever. Now, his last three Pokemon. Moltres. Fire type. Uh, fire flying type has hurricane. Uh, I don't actually know what the other moves are, but it does have hurricane, and it yeah. I've <laughs> and for some reason, it used hurricane. These Pokemon are not that smart. Um, so we're gonna use. Uh, hmm. So I have a problem, and that will be we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna flash it. And then we're going to see what happens, because I have a problem, and that problem is... Oh wait, I have a Pokemon that four times resists grass. Come on, his stuff. This is the problem with two turn moves, folks. So it has Solar Beam. I think it even has Sunny Day. His stuff's going to eat that right up. Yummy. Alright, now let's just crunch it. I don't... Yeah, use Sunny Day instead of a fire move. Now it's like, oh, cool, I can use Solar Beam all the time. Great. But as you can see, he's got a Moltres. Now it's Sunny Day will be stronger. Now it's Solar Beam, Hurricane Mist, because of this, probably because of the flash drop. And this should finish it off just fine. Yeah, there we go. Answer Solar Screw to 73. His tub should hit 73 as well. Good, good. But yeah, I could use the EV Trainer. Hmm. Articuno. So it's sunny, so that's not really going to help Articuno, because Hurricane has a 100% hit chance in rain. But unfortunately for Articuno, we uh, we are a steel type. We resist that too, because steel's the best defensive type ever. Even after its big nerfs. And we have a move that's strong against that. This is the second legendary bird. Turner is showing them all off. I think you can guess where this is going at this point, what his last one is going to be. And I will explain in just a second 
why I didn't just use Uproar. Unless... Unless you already figured it out, in which case, great. But... Again, you 75. Nice, nice. Team really coming along. You wouldn't think I could take on a trainer with Pokemon this high level, but when they're really dumb, it doesn't end up mattering. Because this guy is just doing nothing. Like, he's just with Drill Peck, Drill Peck, on a Zapdos. Like, not even Hurricane. Can a Zapdos learn Hurricane? I don't know. But, like, the movesets are terrible. It feels like he just caught these things and is just throwing them at us. He had Sunny Day and Solar Beam on a Moltres. Which, Solar Beam, fine, but don't run that unless you're on a Sun Team. And this man is not a Sun Team. This man is just a guy on top of a tower with a bunch of birds and a... Godzilla. But his stuff's probably going to take this away because if Zapdos had an electric move that was actually worth using, he would have used it by now. <laughs> really? Drill Peck on a Steel type, my guy? That's just bad! What is this round? Whatever. We're going to Master Chest on this. I've still got a long way to go, huh? Yes, you do. We got 38,000 for beating him. Okay. So, now the thing about Turner is now that we have beaten him, we can shift over to National Dex and search. Uh, we'll just we'll just search that way. Uh what is this? Why? How is this organized? I just tried to do alphabetical, and yet we have C, B. Okay, I guess by number. Okay, so Articuno is the one we're looking for. He's down there. We're gonna. He's gonna chase us around a little bit. But before we go find Articuno, I want to take you guys back to a Pokemon Center. Because I need to bring up the new strategy. So, because what we're going to do is I've realized that Darkrai has Shadow Tag 2 and is lower level than Regigigas. So, the way that Darkrai uh, will help us more is Darkrai is level 50. The legendary birds are, I think, level 60 when we catch them. So, if I go just about anywhere that uh, Articuno is and use a Repel, I will be able to find them with Darkrai. We're going to move Darkrai back out of the team, or back onto the... We're gonna put Darkrai on the team in place of... No, no, I need to actually do it in place of, uh... Or Slush or something. Because I need... Because <laughs> I need Rip Van Fish to serve. So, we're gonna go buy some more Pokeballs. I'll go do that. Okay. But the other thing about Darkrai is I don't remember if I looked at this, because I swear I would have remembered if I had commented on this, but... Darkrai has Shade Trance, which is just a better version of Dark Void, which was Darkrai's unique 80% chance to sleep move. Shade Trance is just Spore, but on an actually good Pokemon. Darkrai is super busted. <laughs> um, Alright, so now we're still looking for Articuno. So we're gonna go find, I guess, I guess go all the way down the list. Of course, I could have found him the easy way again, but I had to make things difficult. Uh, I saw him. All the legendaries are together. But now we have easy access here. Let's check where he is. Oh, he's down there. Let's use a repel and just surf down a bunch. See if we can get him. Darkrai will help us with this by quite a lot. Max repel. No, that's max revives. Cool. Alright. Now surf on down past this route where we've already run into everybody. But I wanted to get the birds out of the way. Because there's another something special that's there once you get them. And we like special things, and I want to show everything that's, you know, unique around here. Everything that's unique around here. And where are you, Articuno? Did you move? No, you did not! Cool. 
Okay, so we have repels on. It's higher level than Dark Rye, so it should show up if we surf around a little bit. So we'll just we'll just surf around a while until I find it. There we go. Not too long either. There it is. Yeah, level 60. All right, Articuno. I don't think your move set is any good, so let's just uh Shade Trance you and see what happens. Missed, I think that prevents stat drops, so Shade Trance should still work. Yes, good. That's a nice animation. Good good for the Game Boy, for the GBA era. Uh, okay. Let's do Dark Pulse and see how much that does. Articuno doesn't have a small amount of special defense, but... And if I get damaged, I could just do Shade Trance to Dream Eater. Uh, yeah, that wasn't a large amount of damage either. But we might might be here a minute, but I don't think Articuno has Roost. At least I really hope they didn't have Roost. Honestly, if any of them have Roost, that would be kind of a bummer. Ice Beam, that's gonna hurt. Hang in there, Darkrai. Okay, not bad. Now, as long as this doesn't kill him, put him in the red would be fine. Ah, uh, that's good enough. Okay. Okay, now Shade Trance again, and then it's Pokeball time. Yeah, these uh, these Shadow Pokeball, Shadow Pokemon really help. And as uh, you said, as uh, Warwatcher83 said a few videos ago, it's nice that they have these, because otherwise your only option for something with Shadow Tag is Wobbuffet. And that's... Not great. But let's see. One, two, three. Got. Ah, it was going to be the first try. Also, I need to go buy more quick balls. I did the thing again. That's just going to be a theme this entire time is that I don't have enough quick balls. Mostly because I can never remember which Pokemon centers have quick balls or not. Like, come on. Why can't they just all have all of the balls as you get more. Like, the point is, the shops are there as you progress further in the game, right? So if I had all the poke all the badges, it should just give me there we go. We got him. But before I lose my thought, I want to say it. Like in other games do, it should add more items to this every shop based on how many badges you have. So I won't have to remember which Pokémart has quick balls and which one doesn't. But we're going to get some quick balls between now and the next roaming Pokémon. Articuno, the freeze Pokémon. Articuno is a legendary bird that can control ice. The flapping of its wings chills the air. As a result, it is said that when this Pokemon flies, snow will fall. Makes sense. I always liked its Shimudi Island Island better than the other ones. And that's Articuno. So let's go back to another town as I try to remember which town has, uh, Quick Balls in it. I think... I think Mauville does. But we're gonna find out together. You guys ready? We've received reports that a large yellow yellow bird said to control the power of electricity has begun roaming the somewhere in Hoenn. Keep a lookout for this incredibly rare species. And that's our uh, our tie-in for the next roaming Pokemon. I forgot that was going to happen. I just came in here to heal my Pokemon and then buy Quick Balls. But anyway, I'm going to go check on Quick Balls. Okay, yes, I was right. I was right. They did fit the electric color scheme of Mauville, but Mauville does have quick balls. Uh, man, I need more money. I don't want to battle the Elite Four yet, though, because I'm pretty sure they have, uh, better Pokemon, and I want to show that off in its own video. However, now we can find Zapdos. I have Articuno. I'm going to look at them all after we're done with this whole side quest. Zapdos is down by Pacific Log. If it stays down by Pacific Log, that would be super nice. The Impalished Crystal, I didn't have to chase down all of them. But in Emerald, they like the whole roaming legendary birds for some reason, because roaming Pokemon are everybody's favorite. So, it is what it is, you know? We'll just uh, check him again. I hate that they can go other places just all the damn time. Just all the damn time. Just come on, roaming Pokemon. I need you to stay static. 
Just be cool. Just be where you are. Oh, finally, here on Route 134, right next to Slateport, I managed to get Zapdos to calm down. We've been chasing Zapdos for about 20 minutes with no luck. But with our max repels and our dark ride, hopefully we'll find it at some point. Gotta not get too close to Slateport there. Just gonna go up and down. Just, just gonna go up and down, not left or right. Because I don't want to trigger it to move again. Because that sure would be awful. Come on, Zapdos, be a friend. I just want to capture you and make you be friends with other things you might not care about. It's it's not so bad once you get used to it. Alright. Getting a little bit annoying. Uh, wow, the repels effect wore off before he found me. I got Dark Rye in the front, right? Yeah, okay. And he's still on this route, right? Come on, Zapdos. Articuno was a real pal. Yeah, we're here. We're here. It's the right one. There we go. Finally! I used like three more repels before I found him. He just did not want to find me at all. Alright. Hello, Zapdos. My personal favorite of the original trio of legendaries. I'm gonna open things up with it. You can't see me, but my hands are on my face. I did it again. This is the Pokemon that, that they fit with. Although I guess Ultra Balls are his most fitting, its most fitting thing to have. But like, oh boy, it's got Roost. Just like I was hoping. I don't like that it has Swagger though, that's annoying. Okay, Shade Trance. Good. I forgot the quick balls again. Alright, um... We're gonna do... We're just gonna start with Dark Pulse. As I recall, Zapdos has less special defense than Articuno does. So, it should be a little easier to damage it. Thankfully, Dark Rai is both tanky and powerful. Look up. Uh, use Swagger again. That's not gonna be good, actually. That's gonna start causing a problem. But, that's fine. We'll just Dark Pulse it one more time, and that should get it to the red, even. And we're gonna... Ah, see? See? I knew it! I knew Turner just found base... See, that's why Swagger's bad, too! And why Confusion effects are bad. You can base your whole strategy around it, and that just happens. Because Swagger's whole thing is you're basing your strategy on the ability for the Pokemon to hit itself. But it doesn't matter if it can just drop it the first time it attacks right after getting confused. The odds aren't in your favor for that one, is what I'm saying. So I guess Ultra Ball fits Zapdos pretty well, to be honest. I wonder where Moltres is right now. Oh wait, no, I don't think Moltres is roaming until you catch Zapdos. Oh well. So I think if I looked for Moltres' location, it would show nothing. But now, we play the fun game of throwing Ultra Balls at it. But Zapdos is one of those Pokemon where, when I was a kid playing red and blue, both red and blue actually, I would catch Zapdos, and he was so good he would just carry the rest of the game. I mean, red and blue is so easy, but I always remember Zapdos for being able to learn Thunderbolt and just sweeping the whole game. Yeah, was, ah, that's what I was afraid of. Maybe I'll hit him with Shade Trance, or not Shade Trance, Blackout, because it's a... Yes, he missed! I didn't even know Swagger could miss. Let's get him a Blackout, because it's a ghost move, it's weaker than Dark Pulse, though I could have actually Dark Pulsed him at that point. At that point... Okay, I can definitely Dark Pulse him again. Hopefully he remains asleep this time, and we can actually get this done. Just don't crit him. I said don't crit him! I'll be right back. Alright, fighting him again. Let's see if the quick ball works this time. Nope. Two. Three. Got him. All right. Oh, that was... Zapdos really made me work for that one. That one was a lot. 
Well, let's see what we get out of this. All of our Pokemon. Zapdos, the electric Pokemon. Zapdos is a legendary bird that has the ability to control electricity. Whoa. And Swagger. He usually lives in thunderclouds. It gains power if it is struck by light stricken by lightning bolts. Yeah, it has lightning rod, or it should. Which is why you don't want to use Uproar on Ampharos against it, because it just gets three free lightning rod boosts. Ah, okay, sorry about that, guys. So we got Zapdos after all that. That was a lot. That was a lot for Zapdos. A lot, a lot, a lot for Zapdos. Okay, now we're going to go back at the Pokemon Center while I've still got you. I'm going to talk to Nurse Joy. Trainer! There's new reports that a large flame-covered bird said to control the power of fire has been roaming somewhere in Hoenn. Keep a lookout for this incredibly rare species. Alright, so we're going to heal, and now it'll be time to catch Moltres. So, we're going to take our same squad, and we're going to go check Moltres's Pokedex entry. We've got all of our uh, setup fine, we got more Pokedex, or Poke Pokedex balls. That, that's what they are, though. Moltres is down there. So, I'm going to start looking for Moltres, and I'll get back to you when I find her on the same route as me. Her, him, whatever. Well, that's not good. Okay, here on 118, I think we've finally cornered Moltres. Now, it's the same route we found Zapdos, funnily enough. But I have been chasing this Moltres for an actual hour, sped up. <laughs> so the game time is going to be quite a bit different, assuming we can find Moltres relatively quickly, but, uh, yeah, when I found Zapdos, when we actually caught him, I found him on this route. First time I found him to the east of Slateport. But, if I may be negative for a moment, I do not like roaming Pokemon whatsoever. I don't think they ever made the mechanics fun, and I think the way that it works is so counterintuitive because you're supposed to be chasing the Pokemon down and you want to, like, corner it in a route, but it so rarely will connect. Here we go. And there's Moltres. The final legendary bird Pokemon. So I have actually already fought Moltres, and I realized that I had my recording paused as soon as I caught Moltres. So that was not good, but one thing I'm not going to do for this particular one is not use a quick ball since I bought all of these. As I sit here and wait for my, uh... Nope, quick ball didn't work. But as I sit here and wait for my Fire Emblem Warriors to be delivered, um... Because, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of, well, the at least the Nintendo Warriors games I've played, and I've been a big fan of all of those. Uh, they're some of the only... Some of the most recent games that I've 100 percented including the one, <laughs> including Definitive Edition Hyrule Warriors for the Switch, which was not an easy game to 100 percent at all. I think that I think I clocked that in at like 600 hours. That that's not a game I would ever do for this channel. There's entirely too much grinding, and it gets very repetitive if you're actually going for 100 percent, like stupidly repetitive. But I am genuinely a big Fire Emblem fan, and I've talked about that before. And that could be a series I could do down the line when I when I have a more consistent schedule and don't have um, sporadic uploads like this. Um, but we're going to catch Moltres here. One, two... Ah! When I was doing the fighting it the first time, I caught it the first time I threw an Ultra Ball. It was... It was magical. You know, Moltres has always been, I think I probably talked about this in Polished Crystal, but Moltres has always been the most questionable looking of the three legendary birds. Not because it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like, because it looks like a firebird. Basically, it's supposed to be a phoenix, and that's what it looks like. But man, the way that it's been portrayed over the years is so like, eh. They never seem to get its design right. I gotta say, though, I think this design works for it. It looks less like a weird chicken and more like a phoenix. But, man, it still does kind of look like a weird chicken. 
But back in the day, they were really bad at getting its design right. Okay, I gotta not crit it like that first time with Zapdos. Then, I'm gonna have to go pick up my order without waking up my wife. Who at this point is just trying to get in good night's sleep. Or good day's sleep. Without, uh, you know, issues. Let's see, one. Come on, Ultras. Hang on. Ah, there we go. Sorry, I had to step away for a second because the delivery got here and I got the game. So cool. I was thinking I would have the recording done by the time they got here, but chasing these birds has taken a very long time. Ultra's gonna do flamethrower. Hopefully that won't kill Dark Ride. I think he'll be a little okay. Okay. Day trance going in. Alright, let's start throwing Pokeballs. Throw another Ultra Ball. I really liked last time where I caught it on the first Ultra Ball instead of having to fight it. One, two, three. Got it. There we go. Okay, and that's Moltres. Now, you might think that we're done. But we aren't. Because roaming legendaries are my favorite thing ever made. Three bird that can control fire. If injured, it is said to dip its body in the volcano of magma to. Um, yeah, you know, what I said, but different. And that's Moltres. That's all three legendary birds. So, let's get ourselves back to the Pokemon Center, because Nurse Joy will have another update for us, I hope. Okay, just paranoidly checking that I'd been recording for this. Alright, let's talk to Nurse Joy. Trainer! We've received reports that an incredibly powerful Pokemon has broken out of its containment and is roaming Hoenn unchecked. Multiple civilians have cited that it is wounded and extremely hostile. Be careful out there. Restore your tired Pokemon to full health. Alright. There's one more roaming Pokemon to find. Let's get to it. So... What this means is that there is a very powerful Pokemon that you might have an inkling about, based on the description, wandering around Hoenn. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to acquire the Pokedex entry for that Pokemon yet, so finding it is going to be a little difficult, and it may take us some time. There are a few things we can do in order to get the Pokedex entry, but we're going to have to start down a different path in order to do that. Okay, so... While I hadn't hoped to leave the video on this note, we did catch three legendaries, and we fought a big important trainer today. So I would like to leave you with that, and it does give us a direction for the next video, uh, which should start with me uh, showcasing the rest of the Hoenn form evolutions, and finally completing the Hoenn decks. So I will see you guys then. Take care.